So my object is uh, a waterfall. It's actually the Falls of Foyers uh, near Loch Ness in Scotland. I don't use waterfalls in my research, but what I'm trying to give you is an example of a visual stimulus. I do research on human visual perception, and so as part of that process, I will have human participants who will sit in front of a computer screen and look at either a static or a moving image. And then I'll ask them um, to perform some kind of task where they give me responses about that image. So it could be which of these two patches of moving dots is moving faster, or which of these two objects is further away. So um, the waterfall in question that I chose is a particularly good example because it dates back to the early part of the 19th century where a man called Robert Adams was actually out walking near Loch Ness and he saw this waterfall and he looked at it for a long time, the water motion moving downwards and after an extended period he sort of looked away at the rocks to the side and he noticed this strange illusion where the rocks appeared to be levitating upwards. So that effect, that after effect, it's called a motion after effect, has been extensively studied since then and from looking at uh, that particular type of stimulus in experimental conditions we've learned an awful lot about how the brain uh, processes um, motion. I started thinking about, and I, it never occurred to me before until I was doing my PhD, I started thinking about the fact that um, what we experience of the world is not driven really by what's out there, it's driven massively by what's between our ears. It's those billions of cells that are doing something very active and actively helping to generate a perception or percepts about what's out there in the world rather than, of course there's something out there, but the brain is heavily involved in determining what we experience about what's out there. So I have a, a bit of a circumlocutus route into psychology, so my undergraduate degree was in mathematics. From there, I mean I was all set to do a PhD in mathematics, but for various slightly boring reasons I ended up going and working in a psychology department doing a purely theoretical PhD which was about how the brain controls eye movements. It was actually much closer to um, robotics than psychology. But through working in that environment and talking to people who were doing things on visual perception, that's when I started to get really excited and interested in how the brain helps us to reconstruct the world. And it was sort of through that kind of weird route that I eventually settled upon wanting to do a career in, in psychology. And I think really what that illustrates is something important and fundamental about psychology is that it's such a massively broad discipline that there's a home for people from all kind of different walks of, of, uh, of science, whether they've got backgrounds in mathematics or in something very social science focused. Psychology kind of spans that entire breadth.